Good morning. I know it's still early. There are still people coming on, but I uh, uh, hope you're doing well this morning. I hope we are able to avoid this winter storm that everybody is predicting. Uh, when we celebrated Eucharist this morning with the diocese, they uh, they had quite an ice storm down in Charleston. I guess everything is pretty much shut down down there. And, uh, the rumor is it's headed this way, but hopefully we'll be able to avoid it. That's that's my hope anyhow. So I, uh, I hope you're doing well. I, I just uh, remind you like I do every week, you know, uh, there's a little chat box over in the lower left hand corner and, and, and sometimes I can see it and and sometimes I can't. Let me see, uh, I see Jim Smith and Sheila, and Bertha and Linda and Debbie. Uh, so usually, as I said, I've said before, when we come to church, we've been trained not to talk to each other, but this is a golden opportunity to talk to each other because we don't get to do that on a regular basis. Uh, for now, the St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Weston and Transfiguration Episcopal Church in Buchanan continue to uh, not uh, allow in-person worship. And, and of course, we do that out of an abundance of safety precautions. And, um, it's going to get better. And we, 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 I know it's difficult and I know it, it's hard. For goodness sakes, it, it breaks my heart every week. Uh, that we're not together, but it's going to get better. Uh, and, and we've done so well for so long uh, about keeping one another safe. We just need to, to to weather this storm and get through it. And when we do get back together, uh, we're going to have a celebration to, to lift the roof off these churches, you know. And um, I'm looking at the chat. I see Janie's there and Carla's there. And, uh, so I, uh, I just encourage you to keep doing the same things that you're doing because you're doing a wonderful job of being intentional about staying in contact with one another, reaching out to one another, you know, whether that's by phone calls or text message or uh, Facebook or, or however it is that you do that. Uh, being intentional about being connected with one another, praying for one another. Uh, because it's going to take all of us working together uh, to get through this. And we will, we will, we will get through this together and have a, a grand celebration on the other end of it. I mean, I'm reminded this weekend, by the way, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Happy day, Valentine's Day in our house, but uh, happy Valentine's Day to you and uh, it would have been on this weekend that we would have, St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Weston would have had our elimination dinner and, and we're not able to do that this year. So uh, the time is coming when we're going to get back to normal and we're going to hit the, when we do that, we're going to hit the ground with our feet moving and, and, and continue to do great and wonderful things. But in the meantime, Let's be safe. Uh, let's be careful. Wear our masks, social distance, wash your hands, uh, sacrifice and, and, and make sacred, respect the sacredness, not only of your own life, but in the lives of your neighbors. So I, I applaud you for all that you're doing. I do have a couple of announcements. Uh, our Episcopal 101, get together has been a lot of fun and we're, we're having a good time and for goodness sakes we could use some more people uh, but we're going to take this Wednesday off because it's Ash Wednesday so instead of Episcopal 101 this Wednesday we will be on Facebook live at six o'clock uh, for an Ash Wednesday service so I hope you spread the word I uh, will be together on Facebook live next Wednesday at, at six o'clock um, for Ash Wednesday and, and Mark uh, and join together as we enter into the season of Lent together. But we're not there yet. Uh, today is the last Sunday in the season of Epiphany. Uh, so as we begin, 
uh, let's remind ourselves of the presence of God that calls us together, uh, supports us in our journey, and joins us in our worship this morning and take a moment and center ourselves. And pray, blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John and led them up to the mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could ever bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses with him, who were talking with Jesus. And then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. He didn't know what to say, for they were terrified. And then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. And suddenly... They looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. And as they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Almighty God, we have heard your word proclaimed here in our midst. May your word shape and form us into the people you have called us to become. Amen. <clears throat> There's a story uh, of a murder trial that was going on. It was about 60 years ago. It was going on out in Los Angeles. Uh, it was a very difficult case for the lawyer to defend because there was a lot of circumstantial evidence against his client, the defendant. And realizing that, the lawyer came to understand that, that he had to pull out something drastic. He had to try something drastic to, to sway the jury and get them to return a verdict of not guilty. So here's what he did. He looked at the jury and he reminded them that the judge was going to instruct them that if they had any, any doubt about the guilt of his client, any inkling of doubt, any teeny tiny shred of doubt, 
about the guilt of his client, then they were required by law to return a verdict of not guilty. And furthermore, he told them, I'm going to call one more witness, and the witness I'm going to call is the actual murderer, the one who committed the murder, and that murderer, and he pointed at the courtroom doors, he said, that murderer is going to walk through those courtroom doors right now. And all the jurors turned around and looked. The lawyer reminded them that in that moment, they had doubted the guilt of his client and therefore were required by law to return a verdict of not guilty. The jurors recessed to deliberate about the case and they deliberated for about five hours. And when they came back into the courtroom to return their verdict, they found the lawyer's client, the defendant, they said, he is guilty. The lawyer was stunned. He says, how can you, how can you say he's guilty? You all looked at the door. And one of the jurors said, yeah, I said, we did. We all looked at the door. In fact, almost everyone in the courtroom looked at the door. Everyone except for your client. He didn't look. Your client, by his not looking, testified against himself. Now, as I said at the beginning, this Sunday our church celebrates the last season in this great, the last Sunday in this great season of Epiphany. It's been a series of celebrations about how God has made God's self known in, in Jesus. And we've heard about Jesus' baptism, we've heard about healings, and we've heard about him calling disciples. And on this last Sunday of the season of Epiphany, we always read one of the accounts of the transfiguration. And, and this year, we hear Mark's telling of that story. And, and in that story, we hear a compelling witness on behalf of Jesus. We hear the very voice of God speak from the cloud and testify and say, this is my son, my beloved, listen to him. And that testimony, that voice of God would be very, very important for the early disciples because despite the fact that they had left boat and livelihood and family and and everything behind to follow Jesus, despite all that, there would be times in their lives when a little bit of doubt would begin to creep in. That little voices would speak in the back of their brain and, and whisper, be reasonable, be logical, live in the real world, look around you, and when you are reasonable and logical and, and recognize how things really work in the world, you're going to have to admit that it's really the people of affluence and influence that rule the world. It's really the Roman government with its mighty army that tells you what to do. And ordinary people like you, you little disciples, ordinary people like you need to know your place. And when that doubt began to sneak into the back of their brains, they would recall the, the voice of God that spoke to them through, from the cloud and reminded them, listen to him. Listen to him when he tells you, blessed are the meek, blessed are the lowly, blessed are the hungry, blessed are the persecuted. When that doubt began to sneak into their brain, they would be reminded of the voice of God that spoke to them and said, listen to him. Don't listen to everybody else. 
Listen to him when he tells you the very kingdom of God, the power of God is in your midst right here, right now. And if you had faith, just the size of a teeny tiny little mustard seed, you'd be able to move mountains. The disciples were human beings. And there were times in their lives, surely, when they would have doubts, when those voices in the back of their brain would just say, be reasonable, be logical, live in the real world, look around you, see how things really work, and realize that you're just teeny tiny people. You don't have any power. You're powerless. You don't have enough to make a difference. And when those doubts began to creep into their brain, they would remember that voice of God on the mountain that spoke to them and said, listen to him. When he tells you, you do have enough. Listen to him. When he tells you, bring me what little bit you have. Let's bless it. Let's work together. And, and, and blessing what you have and working together, great and miraculous things will happen. The disciples were just human beings. And surely there were times in their lives when they had their doubts, when those voices in the back of their brain said, be reasonable, be logical, live in the world, real world, look around you, see how things really work, and admit that suffering has to be avoided at all costs. And death means failure. And sickness means weakness. And when they began to have those doubts, they would remember the voice that spoke to them from the cloud and reminded them, listen to him. Listen to him when he tells you you ought to expect suffering. Listen to him when he tells you Turn the other cheek. Listen to him when he tells you, you will never suffer alone and no sickness, no tribulation, not even death itself will have the last word. Now on this last Sunday of this great season of Epiphany, that's good news for us. Because we know that like those disciples, we hear those voices of doubt too. The whisper in the back of our brain, be reasonable, be logical, live in the real world. Those voices that tempt us to cave and believe that it's the people of affluence and influence that are in control. It's the powerful that are in charge. And that we should fear and follow them and do what they tell us to do. But it's at those moments when we are reminded that the same voice that spoke to Peter, James, and John on that mountain from the cloud speaks to us and says, listen to him. God's still in control. The kingdom of God is still in your midst. And that power of God is available to us right here, right now. And if we had faith just, just the size of a teeny tiny mustard seed, we could move mountains. On this last season, a Sunday of the season of Epiphany, we admit that there's times when doubt creeps into our lives. Those little voices tell us to be reasonable, be logical, live in the real world. Those voices that tell us that we're small, we're little, we're ordinary, we don't have enough to make a difference. It's at times like those that we recall that the same voice that spoke from the cloud to Peter, James, John, and Jesus speaks to us. He says, listen to him when he tells you. You do have enough. Give me what you have. And if you share what you have and we work together, Great and miraculous things are bound to happen. The 
today on this last Sunday of Epiphany. We admit that we, at times we too have doubts. Doubts that tempt us to believe that we ought to avoid suffering at all costs and sickness and death are signs of weakness. But the same voice that spoke to Peter, James, John, and Jesus speaks to us and says, listen to him, expect suffering. No, you'll, you'll be rejected at times. No, there will be suffering. Turn the other cheek, but you, we will never suffer alone. And no sickness, no tribulation, not even death itself can hold us down. Because God is in control. On this last Sunday of the season of Epiphany, we admit that from time to time, Doubt creeps into our existence, and that makes it difficult at times for us to be faithful disciples. But the good news is, the same voice that spoke from the cloud on that mountain to Peter, James, John, and Jesus speaks to us. Listen to him. Believe him. And if we do, that is the way we'll be able to follow him. And let's pray. Good and gracious God, on this last Sunday of the season of Epiphany, we long to hear your voice. We admit our weakness. We admit our doubts. But we also proclaim our confidence that when we listen to him and follow all the things that he told us, we will be victorious. Help us, Lord, to hear his voice, to follow him faithfully and proclaim his presence in our words and in our actions. Amen. Okay, um, thank you. We have some prayer requests. Um, uh, Debbie Sprouse writes that in the last week, her brother lost two friends, one to COVID and one to a, to heart, a heart attack. So for goodness sakes, uh, we keep them in our prayers. And, and for Molly uh, Burkhammer, um, we also... Continue to pray for Jerry uh, and, and for Barty, uh, for Barbara and Mary, uh, for Karen, Tom, and Mentor, uh, for Jana, Pete, and Luther, for Steve, Jeff, Rod, Aunt Rosie, Jill, Shirley, Margo, and, and Dottie. See if I can find any more here. I know that sometimes you type them in and I don't see them till later. So I know that there are also thought you have people in your heart that uh, you want lifted up. So remembering them and those we have mentioned out loud, we pray almighty God, take care of those we love, take care of us, uh, help us to uh, continue to be faithful disciples hear your voice, and follow in your way. Amen. And let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us this morning by the powerful witness of these people who gather together on Facebook Live and through the word that we have shared. Now send us into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. So just a couple quick reminders. Episcopal 101 is going great. We'd love to have you. But this Wednesday being Ash Wednesday, we'll be together on Facebook Live at six o'clock 
and then we'll resume the Episcopal 101 uh, the next week. So until that time, I thank you for being here. I thank you for all that you're doing. Um, God bless you. God love you. God keep you safe. And I can't wait to be back together on Wednesday and, and then again on next Sunday. Uh, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. God bless.